This begins with a limit, a barrier etched into decades of science, unchallenged, unquestioned, and built into the world's most ambitious fusion machines. For over 30 years, this boundary dictated how dense plasma could become before tearing itself apart. It was accepted as law until now. A recent breakthrough didn't just question the rule, it rewrote it. And if it proves right, it could double the energy from fusion reactors. Not speculation, a shift in the blueprint. And it all starts inside the most powerful machine ever imagined for clean energy. A ring of fire called a tokamak, and a rule that just cracked. At its core, a fusion reactor has one job. To make atomic nuclei crash together and release energy. Simple to say, hard to do. Tokamaks are the machines designed to make it happen. Shaped like a donut, their magnetic fields trap a spinning storm of plasma. So hot, it would vaporize any material on Earth. Inside this plasma, we mix deuterium and tritium, two forms of hydrogen. When they collide with enough force, they fuse, forming helium and releasing energy. But collisions don't happen easily. The plasma must reach temperatures of 100 million degrees Celsius, hotter than the sun's core. It's not enough to hit that heat. We also need to confine the plasma long enough and keep it dense enough for fusion to sustain itself. The magnets keep the plasma from touching the reactor walls, but the entire system walks a fine line. Too little pressure or temperature, and it fails. Tokamaks are humanity's most daring attempt to mimic the stars. But their limits have always been dictated by stability, especially when it comes to how dense that fuel can get before the whole thing unravels. To measure how close we are to usable fusion, scientists use a number called the triple product. It's the product of three things, temperature, ion density, and energy confinement time. Raise all three, and you get fusion that can generate real power. The temperature target is known, 100 million degrees, Fusion requires speed, and that comes from heat. We've already hit that milestone in experiments. That leaves two challenges. How many ions we can pack into the plasma, and how long we can keep the energy from escaping. Energy confinement is about holding the heat. But ion density, how tightly packed the fuel is, might be even more important. More ions mean more collisions. More collisions mean more fusion reactions. But packing too many ions causes problems. The plasma can destabilize. Magnets struggle to contain it. And that's where the limitations start. The triple product tells us where the line is. Beyond it, reactors become unstable. But what if that line isn't fixed? What if one of its most important limits, ion density, was based on an old idea that no longer applies? Because that's exactly what a recent breakthrough seems to suggest. Back in 1988, physicist Martin Greenwald studied plasma behavior in tokamaks and noticed something important. As scientists tried to increase ion density, their reactors often failed. Plasma would collapse, causing disruptions. So Greenwald derived an equation to explain the threshold. His formula was simple. The allowable ion density is proportional to the current in the plasma, divided by the cross-sectional area. This became known as the Greenwald Limit. It wasn't a fundamental law of nature. It came from observed data. But it worked so well that engineers around the world trusted it. They used it to shape every major fusion reactor design, including ITER, the most advanced tokamak ever constructed. The logic was clear. If you cross the density limit, plasma becomes unstable. So designs stayed conservative. Greenwald's equation set a ceiling that no one dared to question. Until now. For decades, the fusion community has built around this invisible wall. But what if the experiments of the 1980s didn't tell the whole story? What if that limit wasn't physics, but a product of the tools and technology available at the time? Now, a new equation is challenging everything. On May 6th, physicist Maurizio Giacomin and his team published a groundbreaking paper. Their claim? The Greenwald limit wasn't wrong, but incomplete. Using first principles, they derived a new equation that includes factors Greenwald didn't. This wasn't based on outdated experiments. It was grounded in physics, laws governing magnetism, plasma flow, 
and energy transport. When they did the math, something unexpected appeared, a hidden variable tied to heating power. In Jackman's model, as the input power increases, so does the allowable ion density. That means high-powered modern tokamaks, unlike the ones from the 1980s, can safely hold more fuel than anyone thought. This isn't a minor tweak. It's a recalibration of a fundamental limit. For decades, designers stayed under a ceiling that didn't need to exist. Jockerman's work suggests that the ceiling moves depending on how much energy we put into it. The implications are huge, especially for new reactors designed to operate at high power. Because if more density equals more fusion, then we've just unlocked a new path to doubling the output of every future fusion machine. To understand why density was limited in the first place, we have to look at the plasma's edge. As you increase ion density, the outer layer of plasma cools down. Cooler plasma is unstable. It can't hold pressure like hot plasma can. This creates an imbalance, disturbs the magnetic field, and eventually causes the plasma to collapse. That's why the Greenwald limit existed. It kept plasma from becoming too dense and tearing itself apart. But Jockerman's model showed something new. If we keep the edge hot using extra heating power, we can avoid this cold shell problem. By pouring more energy into the plasma's boundary, we prevent the cooling that causes collapse. That stabilizes the system, allowing much more density without triggering disruption. In this new model, the density limit isn't fixed. It rises with the amount of heating power you use. And that changes the game. Because now, modern reactors aren't boxed in by old constraints. They can be pushed harder, loaded with more fuel, and made vastly more powerful. All by simply understanding the plasma better. This discovery's biggest test case is ITIR. Built through an international collaboration, it's the largest tokamak ever created. Its mission? Prove that fusion can produce more power than it consumes. But it was designed using the Greenwald limit. Every parameter, ion density included, was calculated to stay under that ceiling. But Jockerman's equation now suggests that ITER could safely operate at twice that density. Not just slightly more, double. That would mean twice the fuel inside the plasma, and with the same temperature and confinement, twice the energy output. For ITER, it may be too late to redesign. Its systems are already locked in. But even if it can't fully exploit the new model, the discovery validates something far more exciting. It proves that next-generation reactors have untapped potential. This breakthrough didn't arrive in time to change ITER's construction, but it may change what ITER proves. Because if higher density leads to more energy, we're not looking at theory anymore. We're looking at a fuse already lit. Imagine the triple product plotted on a graph. The x-axis is temperature. The y-axis is the triple product itself. There's a blue shaded region, the fusion power plant zone. Anything inside it is considered viable for real energy production. Before, ITER was expected to just reach the edge of that zone, just enough to prove fusion can work. But with this new density model, its potential shifts. If the ion density doubles, so does the triple product. On a logarithmic scale, that shift isn't small. The red marker representing ITER moves significantly further into the power plant zone, not barely viable, firmly inside. That's the difference this discovery makes. It doesn't just improve performance, it shifts the outcome. It takes reactors that were barely break-even and pushes them into surplus territory. The fusion dream has always needed better confinement or hotter plasma. But now, it may come from something simpler better use of the space we already have. More ions, more reactions, more energy, all hidden behind a limit we never should have trusted. While ITER is locked into its blueprint, DEMO, the next big fusion project, is still in development. DEMO isn't just an experiment. It's the first reactor meant to supply actual electricity to the grid. And that makes Jockerman's discovery even more critical. Because DEMO hasn't been built yet, it still has room to adapt. Its design can account for the new density equation from the start, 
stronger heating, better confinement, and higher fuel loads. That means more energy output with the same infrastructure, a more efficient path to commercial fusion power. Demo was already a big leap, but with this new model, it could be the first reactor to truly break the energy barrier in practice, not just in theory. It could go beyond proving fusion works and show that fusion pays. Maurizio Giacomin's discovery didn't arrive too late. It arrived right on time, for Demo and for us. Because the real challenge in fusion wasn't building the machine, it was knowing how far we could push it, and now we do. Fusion has long lived in the realm of someday, but with each discovery like this, someday it turns into a plan. The Greenwald limit shaped a generation of reactors. Now, a new model could free the next. Maurizio Giacomin didn't invent fusion, he unlocked more of its potential. He proved that with enough power and precision, the ceiling rises, and with it, our chances. Fusion isn't solved, but it's closer, measurably, meaningfully closer. Because sometimes, the key to the future isn't in making something new. It's in rethinking what we thought we already knew.